So today we are taking a look at the Shadowland Season 4 Brewmaster Monk Guide. Uh, this is specifically for Mythic Plus, but honestly it's the same thing for Raid, so this is going to be the TLDR guide for this. I did a much longer guide, which I'll put a link in the description and on one of the cards at the end of the video. So if you feel like you need more info after watching this, you can go ahead and take a look at that video to get the more in-depth guide. So let's start off with utility. So first off, we've got mobility. So monks are like the most mobile tank that we have in the game right now. Uh, maybe demon hunter is pretty close, um, but monks probably the the best. Um, we have access to chi torpedo or roll in tiger's lust, uh, as well as transcendence, which uh, both of those things are great tools for getting around the dungeon quickly, um, or in Transcendence's case, um, maybe backtracking quickly, or you know, getting out of dodge when bad mechanics are coming up. Uh, next up, we got crowd control. So monks have so much crowd control, it's actually kind of crazy. First off, we've got paralyze on a 30 second cooldown uh, that can be used to paralyze CC a mob or interrupt or deal with like bad uh, non-interruptible casts, uh, and that works on everything except for non, um, the, like, the special elite mobs. We've got Ring of Peace on a 45 second cooldown, which knocks everything back. You can also use this to interrupt and uh, save yourself when it's Necrotic Week. Uh, we've got Leg Sweep on a 60 second cooldown. It's a mass AoE stun, lasts for three seconds before DRs, and that's not target capped at all, so everything. And then lastly, we've got Clash, which is kind of like a better form of the Warrior Charge. Basically, anything between 8 and 30 yards, you can Clash on a 30 second cooldown to uh, pull it and yourself to the middle, the midpoint of wherever you're at. Uh, so if it's 30 yards away, you and it will meet at 15 yards in the middle. Um, and that has the nice benefit of doing things like moving out of Sanguine or interrupting uh, mobs that are casting if you're out of an interrupt. Uh, lastly, we've got our healing components. So uh, Monks do come equipped with detox on an 8 second cooldown, costs 25 energy, uh, and this dispels both poison and disease effects. If you've got both on you at the same time, it'll dispel both, um, but it, most of the time it'll just get one or the other because you generally don't have both on at the same time. Uh, and then we have Vivify, which can be used uh, just you know as often as possible as long as you have energy. It costs 25 energy, um, and this generally hits for about 10k non-crit, 20k with a crit. Uh, it could be slightly more this season, depending on how much agility we end up with. Uh, but this is generally safe to cast uh, where it's not if you're a guardian druid, because our stagger keeps working when we're in human form, because we're always human form. And then the last thing I didn't put on here would be our uh, just monk debuff. So we also bring that passive 5% um, extra physical damage taken to mobs uh, just by attacking them. So that's something that your group will benefit from as well. Now let's move into talents, which is I'm sure what you're here for. Uh, so nice thing about Monk is we've just got one talent layout that you can use for literally everything. Uh, I honestly don't change this. I use this all the time. So uh, you're going to start off by using uh, Chi Wave, which uh, is going to uh, send out a wave uh, that it's really a targeted attack. So you'll hit a target, it'll bounce and heal, It'll attack a target, bounce and heal, attack a target, bounce and heal, attack a target. So it does that seven times. Uh, honestly, you're not going to use it that often. I use it basically every time someone takes like a big hit of damage, I'll just put that out. Um, or I'll use it to pull because it does have that 40 yard range. Uh, next up, we've got the row 25. So that's going to be either Chi Torpedo or Tire's Lust. Um, and again, so you can choose there your personal preference. Uh, if you take a look at like most monks, they're running one or the other. It's about 50-50 slit. I tend to prefer Chi Torpedo just because it gives me extra movement throughout the dungeon where I can, you know, kind of chain pull a little bit faster. Um, plus, if there's like a big AoE attack, you can get out of it pretty quickly. Light Brewing is up next. Uh, this basically just reduces the cooldown of our Purify Brew and Celestial Brew, which is our main defensive cooldowns. So you want to take that. The other two talents are, as they say, Garbalish. Up next is Ring of Peace. Uh, we talked about this on the last page, but 45 second cooldown. Um, you're going to want to take that. It's it's better than Ox Statue. Uh, you'll really never use Tiger Tail Sweep, so take that. Row 40, you're going to choose Bob and Weave. This makes it so that uh, your stagger, instead of dealing damage to you over 7 seconds, uh, it's going to do it over 10, which means you're taking less per tick, um, and that's a lot better than Healing Elixir. You could take Dampen Harm, but um, honestly, you don't need it, um, but if you want an extra defensive, you could take Dampen Harm. Up next, you're going to take uh, Rushing Jade Wind. This is a sex, uh, 6 second cooldown. Uh, it lasts for 9 seconds, though, and it just does damage around you when you're attacking, so it's just kind of like a buff put on you, and it does damage, so that's nice. 
And then our last row, you're going to take high tolerance uh, over on the left. That makes it so that depending on how much stagger you have, you get extra haste. So at low stagger, you'll have extra 5% haste. At medium stagger, you'll have 8% extra haste. And then at high stagger, red stagger, you will have 15% haste. So you just get free haste, basically. Uh, and again, the other two talents there are, again, garbage. All right, so after talents, let's talk about soul binds. So uh, there really is only one soul bind that you will need, uh, and that's going to be the Kyrian soul bind of Mykonos or Forge Light Prime. So uh, there are two splits here that you can take. Both are highly used. Uh, so the first one on the left here is going to be your DPS uh, tree. So you're going to start by going on the left, selecting Strike with Clarity. Uh, that's also going to give you that node that uh, auto procs your file when you get low. After that, you're going to Take the only node that's there, which is Tumbling Technique. That's going to make it so when you Blackout Kick, you have a chance to get a uh, free charge of either Roll or Chi Torpedo. If you chose Tiger Lust, it doesn't actually give you Tiger's Lust. It just gives you Roll again because you still have access to Roll. Uh, from there, you're going to take the node on the left. Uh, that's going to make it so anytime you get healed, you just repair your gear. Uh, I haven't repaired in, like, years. It's pretty nice. Below that, you're going to take Harm Denial. That's going to increase our Expel Harm healing, uh, which is just amazing. Below that, you're going to take Scalding Brew on the left. Uh, that's going to make it so that whenever you attack with Keg Smash um, on a target that has your Ignite on it, it's going to do more damage, which is awesome. No, below that, doesn't matter. You're taking it for the potency. Below that, we're going to take another potency, which is Walk with the Ox. This is going to make it so that your uh, Ox hits harder, so your Nzao is going to hit harder, and it's also going to reduce the cooldown of it uh, as you attack with your different abilities. On the left, then, you're going to go and take that node, which increases your healing done, which is nice. Um, and then you're going to take Condensed Animosphere, which is going to uh, just passively heal you every, like, 10 seconds when you take damage. And then the bottom node, obviously, is the one that's nice, which makes it Weapons of Order um, do an extra little bit of AoE damage and reduces the cooldown on it. Now, if you want to play slightly more defensively or slightly more in your own control, I guess I would say it, um, you can, instead of going left at the beginning, you can go right. Uh, here you're going to take Fortifying Ingredients. This is going to improve our like best defensive cooldown of Fortifying Brew, and it's going to make it even better. Uh, so it's going to add a Absorb Shield to it, which just gives you more defense, which is nice. Um, and then the nicer part about this is instead of taking the Auto File proc, which is nice for like DPS or maybe healers, um, we're going to get the one that when we use our file on our own, it actually knocks back mobs, which is kind of nice for like Sanguine, or maybe if you just need like a small reprieve, um, or maybe you just need to stop a cast. So um, that's there. So again, you can really choose either one. Honestly, I tend to like during uh, regular keys that I'm not trying to push, or if it's right, I'll take the left path and take strike clarity. Um, and then uh, if I'm pushing keys and working on like improving my score, I'll take the one on the right with fortified ingredients. Um, maybe it's fortified weak and you know just things to shit harder, or maybe you know it's Sanguine weak. Uh, and or necrotic week and you just want more control over your file and being able to move things out so um, that's where the right tree at the top there comes in handy all right up next we've got stats so with our stats our priority here is going to be agility is greater than verse which is greater than or equal to crit and then that's going to be greater than mastery which is greater than or equal to haste so the reason for this priority uh, so, first off, agility being best is because the more agility you have, the more stagger you have. Um, so, with current stagger levels right now, I've got about 50% stagger, which means uh, if you take a 100k hit, you're going to take 50% of that up front, so 50k, and then the next 50k, the other 50k, you're going to take as stagger damage over 10 seconds. Um, and then you can do things to reduce that stagger um, to make it so you take less damage overall. So agility is really good. Generally, this is why you'll see a lot of guys out there say, hey, when you see a piece that's like a greater item level, you want to take that. Uh, that's generally true if it's like 10 item levels or higher, um, especially if you are taking off a verse crit piece for something that's not verse and crit. Uh, 10 item levels is generally there. Uh, if you don't have verse crit, then maybe five item levels is, is the goal there. Uh, verse is just good. Take less damage, deal more damage. Enough said. When it comes to crit, this interacts with our passive ability Celestial Fortune, which you can see down there in the bottom left. Uh, this makes it so that you have a chance equal to whatever your crit chance is uh, to be healed for an additional 65% of whatever your heal is. And that applies to not just um, 
traditional heals hitting you, it applies to hots hitting you, it applies to your own healing through expel harm, it also uh, applies to your shields that you put up through celestial brew and fortifying brew. So those all have a chance to give you extra absorb shield, which is just amazing. Um, and then crit ends up being really good for us anyways, because we want more damage through kick smash. Uh, after that, mastery is about greater than or equal to haste, and here's why. So your mastery makes it so that uh, whenever you take a hit or blackout kick, you're going to get a stacking buff that gives you a chance to dodge based on your mastery, uh, and that just keeps on like increasing. So if you've got one stack right now, you can see I would have 17.7% chance to dodge, and then if that if it goes up to two stacks, I'm going to have 34, uh, actually 35.4% chance to dodge, and that just keeps on building. Um, so that's just good to have when you're taking a lot of mobs, especially in Mythic Plus, um, and that also increases your attack power by that 17.7%, or whatever your mastery percent ends up being. Uh, generally, like last season, seasons before, the, uh, I tend to low, run a little bit less mastery because I just stack up a, on as much verse and crit as you can get, um, and then haste isn't super desirable. And here's the reason that that is. We've already talked about it, actually. It's our talent high tolerance, um, because pa basically we're just passively going to have a lot of haste. Okay, so we get 15% additional haste for being in red stagger, and for the most of the dungeon, you're actually going to be in red stagger. Uh, you don't actually take that much damage from stagger, but it's considered red, uh, anything over like a thousand damage, so you're basically always going to be in red stagger. So you're just getting free haste. So uh, that's why we don't super value haste there. But generally, you, uh, when it comes to gear, you're going to want as much verse heavy and crit gear. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's high verse, high crit. Uh, you're going to want as many verse crit pieces as you can get your hands on. So talking about stats, let's go ahead and move into our legendaries and gear. So the legendaries you're going to want, there's just two of them, uh, and you use this for both raiding and mythic plus, so it's good for all that. First one's going to be Storm Stout's Last Keg. You're going to craft that on your belt. It's the only option because the other two options are tier slots. Uh, and this makes it so Cake Smash deals 30% additional damage and has an extra charge. Uh, the extra charge is really what we're going for there. It just gives us an extra threat generation and more damage and more healing and more awesomeness. And then when you are Kyrian, you're going to have Unity. You're going to want to craft these on Bracers or Neck uh, previous seasons. Legendaries were our highest budgeted stats, but this time it's actually going to be our lowest item level piece. Um, so because of that, you're going to want to put it on your lowest budgeted gear, and that's going to end up being bracers. Um, but if you have good bracers, then you can put it on your neck. Uh, this makes it so that when you use weapons of order, your Kyrian ability, it's also going to summon Nizal to attack and take on some, some of your stagger for 12 seconds. And then let's also talk about the two and four piece bonuses. So the two piece bonus isn't anything uh, spectacular. Basically, when you have your Breath of Fire Ignite dot on a target, you now take 9% less damage instead of 5% less damage. So, not bad. Not great, but not bad. Uh, the bread and butter here is the tier 4 piece bonus. So this makes it so Cake Smash does 50% additional damage. If you're good at math, you can see through the Lego and this, you're getting 80% additional damage. Math. Uh, and then it's also going to heal you for 66% of the damage dealt with Cake Smash, which uh, in multi-targets applies to all the targets it. So that's nice. Uh, and then it also grants you a extra max health of 66% of the damage that you deal with it. And this applies to like crits too. So uh, this is another reason that crits are really good for us. It gives us more healing. It gives us more max health. That max health plus uh, stacks up to 10 times and lasts for 10 seconds. Uh, so this allows us to have like the lowest, going from the lowest health pool to the largest health pool or you know, nearly the largest, maybe Guardian slightly higher. Um, but just means you can do more damage through Touch of Death and survive more hits. So it's really, really good. As soon as you can get it, definitely get it. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about our opener and rotation. So when it comes to our opener for DPSing, whether you are in AoE situations or single target, you're going to have the same opener. You want to start by just activating Rushing Jade Win. Then you're going to Cake Smash. Then it's important right after Cake Smashing to Breath of Fire. This puts your Ignite Dot on everything. Uh, and then you're just going to go ahead and Cake Smash again. It's important to Cake Smash after the Ignite, because that's where our Conduit comes in, making it do more damage. After that, you're going to hit Weapons of Order, which is going to uh, give you another charge of Cake Smash. And so you're going to Cake Smash again. And then finally, since you can't Cake Smash anymore, you'll Blackout Kick. Uh, and then your Spinning Crane Kick. Then follow that up with another Rushing Jade Wind, and then you're going to proceed with your normal rotation, which I'll put over on the side there in a second. So basically, you kind of get into this habit of like Cake Smash, Breath of Fire, Cake Smash, Buff, 
cake smash, and then do other things. All right, and blackout kicks top priority as you're going along after you know Breath of Fire and, and all that other stuff. So here is the priority order for you now. So Touch of Death, if it's going to kill the target. Generally, you don't want to use Touch of Death unless you have more health than the target. Uh, there are some exceptions to that, such as like the shield on Maiden or maybe the shield on the Shrouded Many of Us. Um, but generally, if you're going to use Touch of Death, you want it so that you can kill things with it because it does three times more damage than if you can't kill the target. Uh, secondly, you're going to Cake Smash if you are at or nearing two charges. Uh, after that, you're going to make sure to use Breath of Fire on cooldown. Again, making sure that you've Cake Smash before that so that you can get the Ignite Dot up. Uh, next, you're going to use Weapons of Order if you're not going to cap yourself on Cake Smash because it does give you that extra charge. Um, and then the other stipulation is that you don't already have Nazao out. Um, so Weapons of Order gives you Nazao, and then Invoke Nazao gives you Nazao. Uh, you don't want to have them both up at the same time because they don't interact well, and I'll explain why here in a little bit. Um, but so, use Weapons of Order if it won't cap you on Cake Smash, and as long as you don't already have a Nazao out. Up next, you'll use your other offensive slash defensive cooldown, which is Invoked Nazao. Um, and again, that's only if Nazao is not already currently active from Weapons of Order. So you'll delay that by 12 seconds after using Weapons of Order in both cases. Alright, after that, you're going to Blackout Kick, then Refresh Rushing Jade Wind. If you have any health missing at that point, you're going to want to Expel Harm. It just costs 15 energy, so you can pretty much do that every 5 to 6 seconds. Uh, after that, you'll Cake Smash, you know, even if you aren't nearing two charges. And then you'll Spinning Crane Kick if you have enough energy to Cake Smash after. Spinning Crane Kick costs 25 energy, Cake Smash costs 40, uh, so you don't want to spam this. Also, you don't want to spam Spinning Crane Kick because uh, it, you know, has a channel to it. You can still do other attacks while channeling. However, if you do two back-to-back, -back, it cuts off the channel and starts a new one, so you do lose damage there. So uh, generally, if you have enough energy and you don't need to, like, Cake Smash or something, uh, you'll want to put a different ability, such as, like, Rushing Jade Wind or Blackout Kick or Breath of Fire in between your Sprinting Crane Kicks so that you don't lose out on damage there. And then if you have nothing else to do, then you can She Wave! Um, again, most of the time I actually just use this to pull targets or if, like, the group takes a large chunk of damage, then you can she wave to do damage and heal some of them. Uh, one of the things you'll notice is missing from here is Tiger Palm. That's because you can take Tiger Palm off your bars. You don't need it. It does less damage than Spinning Crane Kick, and the one second off of your bruise uh, is pointless because your bruise are up basically every 30 seconds, so you're essentially getting like three seconds of cooldown reduction there, which doesn't matter. So does less damage than Spinning Crane Kick, just Spinning Crane Kick, plus Spinning Crane Kick hits all targets. Hurrah! All right, so let's talk about cooldowns then. So our two main defensive cooldowns are Purifying Brew and Celestial Brew. Those are, again, reduced on cooldown by uh, the talent that we took. But it's also reduced any time that you use Cake Smash by four seconds. Both of them are reduced four seconds by Cake Smashing. So these are up pretty often. So Purifying Brew, this is a kind of reactive type of mitigation. Um... And really, when it comes to mitigation, it's really it's really just reducing the damage of your stagger doing damage to you. So what it does is when you press it, it's going to take half of your current stagger pool, and it's just going to delete delete half of it. So boom, you're just taking less damage. Uh, when you use this, it is going to give you a stack of Purified Chi, which is going to interact with Celestial Brew, um, and that stacks up to 10 times. So basically, Purifying Brew, you'll use essentially like every 6 to 8 seconds or anytime you take a large chunk of damage to just instantly get rid of your stagger. All right, Celestial Brew, this is our uh, mitigation that we want to use before you take a hit. So this is going to basically give you a giant absorb shield that's going to reduce the damage that you take, obviously, because you're not going to take it. The shield's going to take it. Uh, this is actually nice, though, because it also, you know, takes damage from your dots and your stagger. Um, so sometimes even if you have full health and you're not going to take a big hit, if you've got a big chunk of stagger, you can Celestial Brew to mitigate that uh, so it's not dealing damage to you. Which comes into play, especially on like Necrotic Week. You'd be like, uh, Necrotic's killing me. Uh, I'm going to shield even though I'm safely away from things. Uh, now, the nice thing about the Purified Chi is that uh, the more Purified Chi stacks you have when you Celestial Brew, the bigger your shield is. 
Um, so this can actually, at 10 stacks, it will give you 200%. So if your normal shield was like for 30k, you'll instead have a 90k shield. So that's really nice. And then as I mentioned with our uh, crit passive that we have, you have a chance equal to your crit to actually make your shield 65% larger just passively. Uh, so crit, really good for that. All right, so our next two cooldowns are kind of like our damage cooldowns, but they're also defensive. Uh, so that's going to be Weapons of Order. That's our Kyrian ability. Um, so again, you're going to use this at the start of a pool directly after Keg Smashing and Breath of Firing. Um, again, it's going to give you a charge of Keg Smash back. It's going to increase your mastery, which increases your damage. Um, and then it's also for 12 seconds with our Unity Lego going to give us Nizao, which Nizao does damage every time you purifying brew it increases the damage of your Nizao stomp based on how much stagger you purified. So Purifying Brew interacts with a lot of these talents that we're going to talk about, or these abilities, um, and Weapons of Order, that's how it interacts with Nizao. So the more damage you purify, the more damage your Ox deals. Now, your Ox also takes on 25% of your stagger damage. So if you're taking high stagger, um, you're going to have this. So this is why we're going to use this at the beginning of a pool, um, because it's going to give us extra damage, extra dodge through our mastery, extra damage through our mastery, and it's going to allow us to really not have to deal with as much damage through Nizao being out. Now, once the buff from Nizao is gone, we generally invoke Nizao, uh, which is going to give you 25 seconds of Nizao coming out. Um, and again, it just deals damage, makes you take less damage. It's nice. Uh, that's generally, I think, a two and a half minute cooldown, but it is reduced through the conduit that we chose every time you cake smash and do other things. So it generally ends up being about a two minute cooldown. Um, Weapons of Order is also a two minute cooldown, but with the Mykonos tree, it gets reduced uh, with targets hit, so on like AoE, it ends up being just over a minute. Single target, it's like a minute 45, something like that. All right, so those are kind of our DPS slash defensive cooldowns. Uh, generally, you'll just use them as DPS cooldowns, but generally, when you're using them for DPS, you're also going to be using them for damage, so you don't really have to worry about that too much. All right, our last two cooldowns are Fortifying Brew. Uh, Fortifying Brew gives you an additional 15% of your max health. It also uh, spreads out your stagger even longer. I believe it makes it 15 seconds that you're staggering over instead of 10. Uh, if you didn't take the talent I recommended, then it makes it uh, five seconds longer than seven, so 12 seconds. Uh, so it's just good, it just means you're taking less damage from your stagger, you have more health. Now, if you took that fortifying ingredients, taking the top right part of the tree that I recommended in the Kyrian tree for you know damage dealing weeks when you're gonna be taking a lot of damage, that's also gonna give you an absorb shield on top of also giving you the 15% additional health and spreading out your stagger. So that's really good. This has a high cooldown. Um, it's it's over five minutes, but again, it's reduced by your kegs. So every time you keg smash, it's going to take four seconds off that. So generally, in Mythic Plus, it ends up being about a three-minute cooldown. All right, and then lastly is Zen Meditation. This is kind of a pseudo-immunity, kind of not... Uh, it lasts for 8 seconds, um, however, if you cast any other ability or take a melee hit, then it instantly ends. Uh, so what it does is it makes you take 60% less damage for the duration, and again, if you get hit by a melee attack, it instantly ends. Um, so you'll use this if you know that you're going to take a large hit that you are just out of cooldowns for, you need to survive it. Um, or maybe there's something you want immune, like shared suffering on the Huntsman fight in Lower Kara. Uh, you can Zen Med and generally immune that, it won't kill you. It doesn't actually immune, it just makes you take a lot less damage, it won't kill you. Um, but this is also helpful on like uh, the second boss in Workshop. Uh, if you are somehow way out of place, I don't know, maybe you cheat torpedo in the wrong direction, and you need to get to the box, but he's doing all the fire breath, you can Zen Med, and every single one of those hits that you take is going to be reduced by 60%. Um, and that ability, since it's not a direct melee hit, it won't cancel the effect, so as long as you don't press anything else, for 8 seconds you can move while casting Zen Med and just take 60% less damage. So, uh, Zen Med, honestly, there's a lot of times I just don't use this in a dungeon, um, and so I generally only use it for things right now like Shared Suffering, or if I'm like, oh gosh, I'm out of cooldowns, I just need to survive like an extra second before this heal hits me. Um, so generally it's kind of like a, a last-ditch survival effort. All right, last but not least, we've got Trinkets and Weapons. So all of our trinkets that are the best in slot come from Raid. Ooh, and they all come from SOD. So this week is actually the first week that you have access to that uh, diner through uh, killing 30 bosses. So uh, hopefully if you didn't already get one of these two trinkets, these are going to be the first two things you want to pick for Mythic Plus. 
uh, if you don't already have them. So the first one is Shard of Aegis. You realize I skipped a word there. I can't read it. I teach math. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but basically, this is like the best trinket that you can get defensively, and it has an offensive component to it. So what it does is on a minute and a half cooldown, it's going to make it so that you put a shield up, and this is going to stop almost 13k damage of every attack that's put against you. So basically, if you're going to hit for 15k, now that hit is going to be only 2k. Um, or if you have lots of tiny mobs hitting you for like 3k, and you put it up just for the 8 seconds, you're not taking damage from them. The nice thing about this trinket is it also, even though it says targets in front of you, it also applies to your stagger and any dots that you have on you. So, and it counts each of these things as individual events. So if you're getting hit for like 13k or let's say 12k for your stagger and you've got a dot doing like 10k to you, each of those are doing no damage to you because they're less than the 13k damage. Uh, same thing with all like the melee hits. If you've got lots of tiny hits hitting you, they're not doing any damage to you. Uh, and then the offensive component to this is if the shield took 45k uh, damage, that's not a cap on that, that just means if it took at least that 45k, it'll explode dealing 7k damage to every target in front of you at the end of the shield. Um, and again, that shield just takes unlimited damage, it's just, you know, taking the damage off the top. Alright, and then the second best trinket for us is the reactive defense matrix. Now this is like completely busted for Brewmaster in a strong way. So what it does is you have a chance when taking damage to activate a shield on you uh, that just absorbs 15k damage basically, um, except for that damage is reflected as things hit you. So when they hit the shield, if they hit you for 3k, they hit themselves for 3k. Uh, and this also has an added effect of if you hit 20k health, it's going to automatically proc that shield. Even if the shield was just up, it'll pop up again and be there and that can happen every 30 seconds now here's why this this trinket is extremely busted for brewmaster is the internal cooldown on this on like the proc on its own the not the hit 20 not hitting 20 percent health but just the normal proc on it is based on how many hits you take now we're always every second we're taking damage from stagger so this is actually ramping up faster for us than it is for any other tank so basically you can have the where this is basically happening every like 20 seconds um and this ends up being so much damage dealt not only just like stopping damage but dealing damage uh in past seasons like in season two this was doing more damage than the file trinket if i was using both file and this it was doing more than this i used this thing in raid last night and it was my second most damaging ability it was doing like 13 percent of my overall damage uh so it is both really good defensively and the best offensive trinket that we can use while tanking okay so it's it's good uh your first two dinars if you don't uh, get these through raid, you should use these um, on these two things. So it's worth doing LFR to get these uh, even at the LFR version. Alright, and then for weapons, our best weapon also comes out of SOD off Painsmith Raz Um uh, It's the Cruciform Vein Ripper. Um, this has the a chance to deal about 5k damage over 6 seconds anytime you are behind an enemy. Uh, attack an enemy whose movement is impaired or is suffering from loss of control. The nice thing about this in keys for us is that Cake Smash applies a slow to targets, so every time you attack, it has a chance to proc. Um, and this works on Cake Smash, it counts as a melee attack, it counts Rushing Jade Wind as a melee attack, so all those things have a high chance to do it. So this is the best weapon we can get for trash packs. Um, it's not going to activate on most bosses because bosses generally don't take you know, uh, slow damage, but that's there. Uh, another good option that you can get now instead of waiting for those dinars to come up for like the third week is the salvaged incendiary tool. This comes out of junkyard. It's pretty similar. You don't need things to be slowed though. It does 3k damage over four seconds, has a high chance to proc. I'm noticing that this thing's proccing all the time. So, um, I've already used one of my dinars on the reactive defense matrix. I plan on uh, getting two other Vein Rippers, but I might end up just running one Vein Ripper and one Incendiary Tool. That way it works on bosses too. Uh, I'll kind of see as, as stuff goes along. But uh, that's it when it comes to trinkets and weapons. So that's it for this uh, TLDR guide. It's a lot shorter than my in-depth guide. Again, my in-depth guide ended up being like an hour and 20 minutes. So if you feel like you want more information on uh, the opener, uh, why we chose talents, what other talent options you might choose, what other soulbind options you might choose, um, how utility 
ability and cooldowns come into play, you can check out the more in-depth guide. I'll put a link to that here at the end of the video. But uh, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Um, if you have any questions, seriously, like I'll hit you back up in the comments. I've also got my info up here on the slide now that you can check out uh, if you want to hit me up through Discord or uh, any of these other options. So thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya!